Hey guys, it's Tahira and today I'm doing my February wrap up. I know my last video was also a wrap up for January, but February just, I happened to be a month where I was feeling uninspired, I didn't make any videos, the weather was gloomy, the lighting wasn't the best because it was always cloudy. Um, but now I finally have some inspiration to film and it just happens to be the wrap up so I'm sorry but I'll get more videos to this channel soon. But anyway in February I read a total of five books which is I think is great because February is a shorter month so I think I think I did great. I don't know. The first book that I read in the month of February was Siege and Storm by Lee Bardugo. Siege and Storm is the second book to the um, Grishaverse trilogy by Lee Bardugo and the first book follows this girl named Alina who is who discovers that she has a power so she goes to the castle. I totally forgot. I'm already forgetting what Shadow and Bone Art is about. But anyway, Siege and Storm. I gave it 4 out of 5 stars. I didn't love it as much as Actually, I would give this more 3.5 out of 5 stars. I don't love it as much as Shadow and Bone. Um, I definitely thought it was a bit slower and um, just it wasn't as action packed as much as Shadow and Bone. And it was better towards the second half, but the first half was pretty boring. One thing I love about Season Storm is that Nikolai is introduced. And of course, I love Nikolai so, so much. He's my favorite character out of this whole Grisha Verse trilogy. And it was so excited to meet him again. The second book that I read in the month of February was actually a book that I read for school and that is Everything I Never Told You by Celeste Ng. Everything I Never Told You follows this girl named Lydia who dies and um, that is not a spoiler at all. It's just it's literally the first line of the book and it's written in the synopsis. So anyway, um, this girl named Lydia dies and it's all about how her family is impacted by her death as well as the uh, relationships between her family, Lydia, and with each other. I love this book. I gave it 5 out of 5 stars and as I said, I read it for school. I've been wanting to read it like anyways because I've heard really good things but um my school my English class was reading it so I was really really excited. I know that sometimes school reading can take away a little bit from the, your enjoyment from the book just because you're doing like assignments or writing essays or whatever for it but I actually really enjoy the experience. Um, I think that since we analyzed it more as a class um, and we discussed the book I got more out of this book that I would have if I had read it on my own. I mean there's some there's a lot to unpack in this book and I would not have analyzed it or seen um on the nuances as much as if I had read it on my own but so I'm actually glad that I read it as a class just so we can get different ideas on what's going on in the story and how Lydia and her family are being impacted. So yeah I really really enjoyed um it was definitely a more slow burn there's a lot of it's a really short book it's only it's about under 100 300 pages but um it goes throughout like decades it goes from when the parents were younger to the children and their all their lives are intertwined and um it can feel a little longer in that sense at least it did for me but I really really enjoyed it. The third book that I read was a book that I got from the library and that is P.S. I Still Love You by Jenny Han. P.S. I Still Love You is the second book in the To All The Boys um, trilogy and I give this book three stars. I was hoping to love it because I love To All The Boys I Love Before and the movie um but I didn't I like I'm so sad I didn't like this book as much. One thing is that it felt really boring and repetitive it just felt like Lara Jean was um just being angry at Peter and Peter was saying like with Jen and he was like oh there's nothing going on and then uh like Laura Jean was being angsty and she was being annoying and it was just a whole thing. Anyway the whole book was basically her and Peter and Jen being angsty teenagers and just wanting each other. It was kind of a hormonal mess but um yeah, it was just really repetitive and boring and I'm so sad that I didn't love it as much because I really, really wanted to love it. But I'm actually interested to see how the, um, because there is going to be a sequel, so I'm interested to see how that will play out as in comparison to the book because I did not like the book and I hopefully I will love the movie. The second book that I read also from the library was Sock Hill Girls by, um... Claire Legrand. I loved Saw Kill Girls. I gave it 5 out of 5 stars. I was really hesitant to read it at first because um, I read Fury Born and I didn't feel I like really did not like that book. Um, actually it was one of my worst books of 2018. That's how much I didn't like it but um, that this pleasantly surprised me. I was so surprised. I gave it 5 out of 5 stars. Like, I was not expecting it to do that, but I fell in love with the story. It has beautiful writing. It's really mysterious, and I'm coming to know, like, realize that I really like 
stories that talk about heavy topics but also have a hint of mystery in them. Like this, we were trying to discover who was taking these girls. I'm sorry, you don't even know what the book is about. So I'll kill girls. It's about an island where there's this monster that only takes girls and then um, these three girls are trying to figure out what's going on. It was really cool. I love the writing. The characters are also one of the best characters I've ever read about. They're also really diverse characters. Like there's a main character um, I'm reading off a notebook because I have notes for all these books. So anyway, there's a girl named Marion who is bisexual and she's dealing with a lot of grief. Um, there's Val who is lesbian and she's gone through a little bit of an abusive relationship. And Zoe who is the black, biromantic, and asexual character. So it's really diverse and was really, really awesome to read about all these characters and how they contributed to the story. And I just love this book so much. It was such a pleasant surprise. And the last book that I read in the month of February was Ruin and Rising by... Um, Lee Bardugo, not Sarah J. Mass. Ruin and Rising by Lee Bardugo. This is the final book into the Grisha Verse trilogy, and I really enjoyed it. There was a lot of plot twists that I kind of forgot about, and it was like it was enjoyable to read it again, and it was like I was reading it for the first time. Because if you do not know, I read Shadow and Bone. This trilogy, twice before, this is my third time reading it, yet I remembered nothing from the past rereads. So, I don't know. I just, it was like I was reading it for the first time, but I really enjoyed it. I know a lot of people say it's not the best writing, and I can kind of understand why. It's very, like, 2015, 2014, 2016 YA, but I, I think a lot of people, like, this may be a tangent, but I feel like a lot of people are judging it for... Like, it was released a few years ago, almost like three or four years ago, and a lot of people are judging it now. They're like, oh, it feels like something that was that's like good for 2014 and 2015 YA. Yes, because it was written in 2014 and 2015. It was meant for that audience. There's so many YA, like, YA has evolved so much since then, and there's so many books that deal with a lot of topics that wouldn't probably have been discussed a few years ago, say 2015. And this deals for a little bit of a different audience, even though the audience is the same, like, they diff there were different people back then. And I'm not saying that it's bad, it's just that it's for a different time. So I think that we are too quick to judge it, and it's, it's, yes, it's bleh and meh at times, but I still enjoyed it. Wow, that was a bit of a tangent there. I did not get mean to get so ranty. Anyway, yeah, Ruin and Rising, the first half was okay, second half was the best. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, that is it for my February wrap-up. Let me know down below what was your favorite book that you read in the month of February, as I would love to know, but that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. Bye!